Hello and welcome to this webinar today. Um, today's webinar is education and how athletes can contribute to clean sport. So I hope you are well and safe no matter where you are in the world. Um, my name is Ben Sanford. I'm the chairperson of the WADA Athlete Committee uh, and I'm going to be hosting this webinar for you today um, and moderating it. Uh, we have uh, three wonderful speakers today who will be able to tell you everything you need to know about education and anti-doping. Uh, we have Kari Kanuti Tonkara, who's the chairperson of WADA's Education Committee. Uh, she's also a member of the WADA Athlete Committee and a former athlete in basketball and Olympian. We have Amanda Hudson, who is WADA's Director of Education. Uh, and we have Kanun Lee, who is the Senior Manager of Education as well. Um, so between our three speakers and with me moderating a little bit, uh, we should be able to answer all your questions um, and also um, give you a really good presentation about education and anti-doping. Uh, just some housekeeping matters to start the webinar off. Um, you might have joined us previously for one of our uh, athlete webinars. We have this athlete webinar series, which this is a part of. Um, the last one that we did was an athlete webinar on uh, COVID-19 and clean sport. Um, and please keep uh, an eye on WADA's schedule for webinars to, to hear what's coming up. Um, the next one will be a Spanish speaking webinar um, about anti-doping and, and WADA and that will be in April. Um, so please stay tuned for future webinars um, that might interest you. Um, you can ask questions during this webinar and you will notice on your uh, control panel that there's a question panel. Uh, please type in your question there. Uh, if it's an easy question, then we will endeavor to answer it um, by typing you an answer. Um, but if it's a, a more complicated question um, or something that we think should be shared with the group, uh, we do have time after the presentations to um, have a Q&A, a, a question and answer session. So. Um, please type in your questions and uh, we will be able to answer them all then. Um, this webinar is being recorded uh, and so if you have to leave early there will be a recording uh, and video of it on WADA's website. Uh, and just a quick note about WADA's privacy policy. Uh, WADA will not use uh, your personal information for any direct marketing or unsolicited follow-up uh, unless you have first been informed um, and expressly consented to this. Uh, there will also be a post webinar survey. And so please, after the, uh, after the webinar finishes, please complete the survey uh, and that will be of use to us um, in planning our, our future uh, webinars. And so that's it from me. I hope you enjoy today's uh, webinar. Uh, please ask us questions in the questions tab uh, and I will hand it over to our first speaker, Cardi. Over to you. Well, thank you, thank you uh, very much, Ben. Um, it's my chair in the in the Water Athletes Committee. It's a great honor to be here, and I want to thank Ben and the Athletes Committee for this uh, initiative uh, to really have a session on education, which is very exciting for me, and also the education team and uh, Amanda and Kangun for for really uh, helping us uh, uh, in this uh, in this matter. So um, my name is Kadi Kamite Sunkara, and I'm very uh, honored to, 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 to chair the Water Education Committee and to start off with talking to you about the value of education. So uh, what is the value of education? For me, it's very simple, and you can see that uh, um, I have a quote here that's very dear to my heart uh, from Nelson Mandela saying that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. So when we bring it to our athletes' work, I think it's the most powerful education you can use to actually change your journey and to protect your journey as an athlete. Um, because I really see education as a key changer in your journey as an athlete. And uh, that was uh, uh, well expressed as well as one of the projects that's really dear to, to Ben and to our athlete committee here, which is the Athlete Anti-Doping Rights Act on Article 7 that states that athletes have the right to education. So yes, throughout the WADA code, um, education is referred and defined as uh, to raise uh, awareness, inform, communicate, to instill values, develop life skills, and decision-making capacity to prevent intentional and intentional anti-doping rule violations. But uh, 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 for us, it's essential to, to, to protect you and through education. So you might wonder why, why education and why is it so important to me? 
Um, I think passion comes from different places and sometimes it can come from a lot of frustration. So I would say that I have two key main frustration and my, my, my first one is my experience uh, during the Olympics. I was fortunate to, to, to take part in the Olympics with the Mali national team in basketball, as Ben said, and uh, unfortunately, I was not educated. So it was kind of a traumatic experience uh, to go through testing without prior education. And the reality is that still there are athletes uh, that are being tested uh, without uh, being educated. Um, uh, there are still athletes that arrive at the games uh, with, with no prior education. And inadverting doping is something that can be reduced through education. So that's my passion come from there and uh, from also being assigned as a, as a NASIC commission member and, and going through meetings. And, and probably that happened to some of you uh, if you are athletes here. Uh, hearing a lot of acronyms, uh, uh, a lot of uh, things that uh, perhaps uh, you're not familiar with because anti-doping can be so complex and, and, and different uh, semantic and terminology to what we're used to. And building there also a lot of frustration. So uh, I decided that the best for me is, is, is definitely to, to educate myself first, uh, to be able to, to, to protect the assets that I'm representing and ensure that uh, they will not go through the same experience that I go through. So that's definitely where um, my uh, motivation for education comes from. Um, so what can you do uh, as athletes if you want to, to get more educated? Um, there are several things that you can do. So for me, as I said, the path was to, be, uh, to become an athlete representative. Um, I've joined uh, the WADA Athletes Committee. Um, and that was the opportunity uh, for me. And uh, Selva, I think it's next slide, <laughs> uh, to educate myself while being a clean sports advocate to learn more about how anti-doping works. Uh, yeah, you can see here um, the WADA Athletes Committee, that was one of our meetings. Um, uh, and, and, and we are clean sports advocate and it's the opportunity to educate yourself as well and to protect yourself and the sport that you love. And to learn more about right, uh, this very complex world uh, that anti-doping is and to protect yourself through that process. Um, so um, education, again, how, how important oh. education is to athletes, I think. <laughs> in uh, uh, the last um WADA athletes international athletes forum that was held in Calgary in 2008 when athletes representatives were attending were surveyed about what they wanted or were expecting most uh, from anti-doping I think um majority of athletes have expressed that education was overwhelmingly uh what uh, one one key area in which they were interested um in that a lot of improvements have happened this year and uh, I can tell you um, that uh, my role uh, as the chair of the Water Education Committee entails to support and advise the Water Education Department, and uh, that uh, there is a significant improvement uh, uh, happening in the code this year, uh, which is the International Standard for Education, uh, to ensure uh, that majority of athletes train and, 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 and compete clean and uh, the basis of, of this standard is that as well. And, and for you, you should be comforted to know that, uh, uh, yeah, if you, if you don't know uh, much about education, it's, it's rightfully so that also uh, majority of athletes uh, train and compete clean. But still, we have some responsibility. And uh, that uh, it is to, to, to protect ourselves and for anti-doping organizations to plan, develop, and deliver education programs for athletes and their entourage and ensure that athletes are educated before tested, uh, ideally. Um, so it means for you that education is now a vital part uh, of a balanced anti-doping program. It, it, it entails for you that uh, ADO should um, ensure that you have access uh, to educational uh, material uh, before and, and very excited even for, for, for the Olympians to, to, to also tell you there is an ADEL for, for Tokyo which is available uh, already online um, uh, so that you can go and log on and you have a presentation. I don't want to uh, go too far ahead, uh, but we have a presentation uh, after of Adele, but uh, 
it entails already for Olympians that there are always some uh, already some some material available for them. Um, so we want you to throughout uh, the, this uh, this webinar and 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 after to to take action and to carry with you what we call a kit bag. Uh, what is a kit bag? Well, keep up to date uh, that uh, things change even in the in the in the field of anti-doping. For example, you'll see that the code now has. Uh, uh, 10, uh, 11 uh, anti-doping rule violations that are that are that are that are available and and that are um, taking into effect into the new code now. It's one additional if you're used to, to 10. For example, that's the change. So keep yourself informed. And I know that as athletes, we're are very good at that, uh, at analyzing the competition and knowing what's ahead and what's new and so on. So keep keep up to date with anti-doping as well. Uh, information is key and, and it's part uh, also of educating yourself, getting informed. Uh, when, you, when it comes to anti-doping, talk, speak up, ask questions um, uh, to your entourage, uh, to the person that are close to you that might be more knowledgeable than you. Uh, don't feel bad about asking questions, it's always good. Be responsible. Uh, just uh, some of us, I think most of us are aware of the strict liability rules. Uh, in telling that you're responsible for uh, any substance found, uh, found in your body. So it's really important for you to protect yourself through education and getting informed. And be advocate for clean sports, right? So um, uh, you can advocate for clean sports. You can be the example. You can show the example by informing yourself and also sharing the information. Sharing is caring, so being an advocate. And finally, get educated. And that's probably why you are here. So congratulations to all of you who are joining us. Uh, from all over the world, and uh, and uh, very uh, very happy to have you here. And now, very excited also to 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 leave the floor to uh, the director of uh, communication, uh, sorry, of education for for WADA, uh, Mrs. Amanda Yetsman, who will take you over what uh, the the education uh, uh, department does at WADA. And uh, and uh, Amanda, the floor is yours. Thanks, Caddy, and uh, hi everyone. Good morning, uh, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. Good to see so many of you joining us today. Um, as Ben shared uh, and as Caddy's just highlighted, anyone who, who doesn't know me, um, I'm Amanda Hudson, Director of Education at WADA. And today my role really is just to talk through um, the work that WADA is doing in relation to education. As Caddy shared, uh, the value and importance of education continues to grow. The recognition that education has a vital role to play in protecting clean sport, protecting athletes is pretty clear. WADA is committed to education, as you can see uh, from Banker's quote here on the slide. And um, what unites uh, with our banker, our president, uh, Ben, even, and Caddy, is that they were all athletes. And for any athletes on the call, you know, Ben, uh, Whitold, Caddy, they've all been where you are. They understand that one of the best ways to protect uh, your health, your sporting career, uh, and an athlete's reputation and the integrity of their sport is by getting educated. So um, Caddy's kit bag reminders are ones not to forget. And we all collectively believe that education has a fundamental role to play in the protection of clean sport. So WADA, together with the support of the Education Committee that CADI chairs, um, well, we have a lot to do. We've set a clear agenda together for our education work that will help guide us. And as education is fundamental to protecting the spirit of sport, spirit is now fundamental to the direction that we are taking. We collectively have a role to play in strategically positioning education as a fundamental part of any anti-doping program. So there's a more balanced approach to anti-doping. We continue to promote the clean athlete and a clean sport culture, and we want to increase global access to education for athletes, their support personnel, and for those around them. And we want to make sure that the quality of that education uh, programs or offer is improved too. We also believe that education has a broader role to play. It has a role to play in helping anti-doping practitioners, those working in the field of anti-doping, and that they can benefit from education too, or let's call it training or professional development. And we want to invest in the anti-doping practitioners 
so that they can provide a good experience for their athletes. And finally, and importantly, research. The more we can understand about what keeps athletes clean and what makes them vulnerable to doping, the more able we are to prevent doping in the future. So with the education agenda set, what is WADA's role? Why is WADA not out educating all the athletes? Well, simply put, it, it's not really our role. As you can see, WADA has two main purposes or, or ways of working. Firstly, we act as the global regulator, so we regulate the anti-doping system. And secondly, we have a role to play in enabling the clean sport community to develop and deliver programs that support clean sport. So for us, the education department, we've identified four core functions. Education policy and standards, social science research, digital education, and ADO capability. And this is the work we're doing in investing in the anti-doping practitioners. We also have a range of education partnerships uh, too, and that helps us further our education efforts. So let's look at education policy, and, and in particular, the international standard for education. And as Caddy said, and as we're excited as well at WADA is, that we now for the first time ever have an international standard for education. And this is good news for athletes and for clean sport. And whilst education was previously mandatory, the international standard for education does go one step further. It explains the processes that need to be taken to develop an education program. Uh, it goes through who needs to be educated, what needs to be covered and whose job it is. Is it the NARDO, the International Federation, or the major event organizer, as examples? It also explains that education is a process that helps people learn. And we do need athletes, we need athlete support personnel and others to learn. We need them to learn the knowledge and behaviors that they need to protect themselves, particularly from inadvertent doping. And just like athletes will all do different types of training to help improve their performance. In the same way, the International Standard for Education also sets out different types of education activities, ones that need to be combined into an education program. So just like an athlete's training, it is the combination of these activities that will have a greater impact on an athlete's learning. And as Caddy explained, she uh, was very uh, successful and went to a games and she was tested and she received, as she said, no anti-doping education prior to that. And for me, this is unacceptable and something that now needs to change. And the International Standard for Education states that athletes need to be educated prior to being tested. So to support this, the clean sport community do need to start educating athletes much sooner and much younger. The athlete pathways you can see on the screen and which can be found in the guidelines for education uh, helps to explain this and provide a model for how this can work. Talented athletes need to be aware that testing happens in sport and why it's important. And by the time elite athletes head off uh, to an international competition, they should be fully knowledgeable about all things testing and have the confidence to request a delay or take a representative with them. But very importantly, our work must start much younger with children engaged in sport. We need to help sport by reinforcing the values at an early age, um, the values that sports teaches us, as, as Banker's quote uh, highlighted earlier. The athlete pathway also highlights the reality, and um, for me, this is really important. Athletes start in sport clean. That is the reality. And the first goal of any anti-doping program must be to work hard to keep them that way. So education is important, it's needed, but it's needed at every stage of the athlete pathway. So how is WADA helping? Well, in our role to enable, we have redesigned and redeveloped our anti-doping education and learning platform, Adele, um, including developing a range of education solutions that anti-doping organizations can use to help them uh, as they try to educate their athletes and other target audiences. And we're really excited about our new platform. It's a bit more modern, looks a bit better, 
Um, and we have, uh, I think yesterday I checked, 400 people enrolling onto Adele. We're having about 5,000 uh, people per week doing a session on Adele. And since the launch in January, we've had over 18 and a half thousand uh, completions of education programs. So um, it's making an impact and, and we're glad that we can offer this as an enabling tool. The other advantage is we now have Adele as a mobile app and this is making, uh, helping to make education more globally accessible. Uh, education via Adele can now be done by, via a mobile phone um, and uh, so resources and programs can be accessed on the go and even offline. And so my very simple message is there's now really not an excuse uh, for, for people not to access the education that they need. So on Adele, we've developed guides. You'll see we have an athlete and an ASP guide to the 2021 code, uh, as well as a guide to the 2021 prohibited list. We've developed education programs for national and international level athletes, and we're currently working on a program for talented level athletes before we start looking further down the pathway at youth athletes. And all of these programs are in line with the athlete pathway I just spoke about. As Caddy mentioned, and with the Tokyo Games coming up, we have pre-games education modules available for athletes and coaches that we developed in partnership with the IOC and the ITA and with the IPC for the Paralympic Games. So for anyone heading to Tokyo or anyone who's supporting athletes heading to Tokyo, if they want to know what's going to happen from an anti-doping perspective at the Games, then our advice is please encourage them to undertake these Tokyo programs. One of the things um, I remember hearing a lot from elite athletes is one of their keys to performance is to control the controllables. Um, well, anti-doping can be a controllable if athletes and their support personnel are educated and in the know. But it's not effective if we only focus on the athletes. And so on Adele, we now also have education programs available for some athlete support personnel roles and others around the athlete. And this is really critical for two reasons. One, because athlete support personnel um, are under the code and the anti-doping rules. And two, they have a responsibility under the code to ensure that they can counsel and advise athletes in the right way. And that includes creating an environment that supports clean sport. So we've now education programs for coaches of elite athletes and parents of elite athletes and medics too. And we'll be developing additional education programs for coaches of talented athletes and also parents of talented athletes. But if our role is not to uh, educate all of the athletes, why are we investing so much in, in these programs? Well, as you can see from the graph, I think we have to face the reality that not all countries have the resources they need to develop comprehensive anti-doping education programs, ones that reach beyond the top level of athletes that they traditionally reach. And so many athletes are still accessing wider education programs as a way in which they can keep themselves up to date and informed. So to increase access and to enable anti-doping organizations to deliver education, we provide these education programs and resources as a solution. It's an option so that anti-doping organizations have the opportunity to do more than possibly what they could do with their own resources. As I mentioned earlier, um, and since my time here at WADA, it's really clear to me that education has a broader role to play. Um, any of you that are here today as athletes, uh, maybe undertaking a dual career, or possibly studying while training and competing. Um, or maybe there's people here today who are anti-doping practitioners or, or those working in sport. Um, I'd like to think that you would uh, understand and, and believe in the power of education and the benefits of professional development and access to training. I mean, let's be honest, anti-doping is very complicated with the code and the standards. And so education or, or more broadly training and professional development does have a key role to play for those working in anti-doping too. So we're investing in line with the strategic plan in the professional development of anti-doping practitioners so that globally 
we can support those working hard to deliver anti-doping programs. We launched our code implementation support program in May, digital hub of tools and resources that can be found on Adele and specifically targeted for anti-doping practitioners and covering a range of anti-doping topics. Um, everything from test planning to how to deal with privacy matters, uh, what to do when a new prohibited list comes out. And as you can see, the demand for help and support uh, is there with over 20,000 interactions so far with the CIS program. And the CIS team uh, that we work with uh, back at WADA HQ and with our regional offices are working hard to listen to feedback and develop more tools and templates to support the practitioners working in the field. As I mentioned, in line with WADA's strategic plan, we're also developing harmonized training programs for anti-doping practitioners to help them in, with the specific areas of their work. Um, and we aim to deliver these by trying to increase the resources available in the regions so that training programs can be organized and support is available through CISP. And this can be promoted a bit more locally so practitioners know what support is available to them. Finally, um, our work uh, is also focused on social science research, um, which is basically trying to understand why people do what they do. Um, we give research grants to help uh, research get done, and we undertake our own research uh, too that we commission directly. Right now, we're doing a research project looking at athlete vulnerabilities. Um, as I said earlier, the reality is athletes start in sport clean. And so what makes them vulnerable to doping at different stages in their sporting career? This is something we need to learn far more about. To help just briefly show the impact of research, just take a look at this graph. Um, this was a study conducted at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games and of athletes, uh, and uh, sorry, a survey conducted with athletes and athlete support personnel. And one finding I want to highlight to you in this study is that they found a direct correlation between whether people were educated and whether they thought doping was morally acceptable or unacceptable. And what the research showed is that those who were educated were statistically more of the view that doping is unacceptable. And this finding was seen in both athletes and athlete support personnel. So in summary, we know that education is probably the least developed area of anti-doping and we're playing catch up, but we're ready. And together with the education committee, the work we do with the clean sport community and our partners, we're working really hard to ensure that athletes, athlete support personnel and those working in anti-doping are able to give athletes the best chance possible to be and stay clean. So for the young athletes of today, the next generation of elite athletes um, and those who are talented maybe and have dreams of making it to the top, the teachers developing sports values in the schools, the coaches, uh, the medics, and for all those working hard day in, day out in anti-doping, trying their best um, to do and to develop and implement robust anti-doping programs. Um, we're here, WADA is doing its best too, to support the opportunity for education. We believe in the power of education and every athlete's right to clean sport. So as Caddy said earlier, please help us get education in athletes' kit bags. And just now, I'll hand over to Kangoon, who's a senior manager of digital learning, who will be able to talk you through in a little more detail what's available on Adele. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Hello, everyone. It's a great pleasure to virtually meet you all. My name is Kangoon Lee, and I'm the senior manager at the education department, and I'm leading all things related to digital learning. I'm very pleased to showcase the Adele platform as well as the mobile app today, which will be beneficial to many of you who are used to learning with your phones and or tablets. To give you a little bit of background, Adele was previously launched in 2018, but on January 6th this year, 2021, we have fully transformed it to be much more user-friendly, engaging, 
modern and dynamic and have all the content updated to the new 2021 code and the international standards. So it is the place for all up-to-date resources and courses for athletes and the whole anti-doping community to benefit from. Moreover, with the mobile app, we are leveraging technology to bring more value for lear learners who are more used to doing all things with phones and tablets and also make offline learning available. So before I go into the details, I'd like to engage you by asking you two questions. You'll see it in your screens. My first question is, have you ever created an, created an account on Adele? So this includes the time even before the launch of the new Adele this year's, but dating back since 2018. So if you can please answer the question, yes or no, that would be very helpful. Okay, we have around 70% 70 70 that has voted. Yes, and the results are 56% has already created their accounts. 44% hasn't. So my second question goes to the 56% who has already created an account. Have you ever logged in to the new Adele platform that was launched on January 6th for those who have already created your accounts on Adele? Okay, I think a lot of you who have already created accounts have logged in to Adele, but since I see that it's half and half who have already created accounts on Adele and the 44% hasn't yet, so I'll be able to walk you through the learner experience as an athlete later on, starting from the registration page in a moment. Before I go to the demonstration, I'd like to share with you a short teaser video of Adele to get you excited on this journey. I hope this video gave you a generic overview of the platform. And before going to the demonstration, I'd like to illustrate the objective of Adele. The objective of Adele is to maximize access to quality education via a digital means. So we're adapting to the digital age we're living in. And the platform is built for you, athletes and athlete support personnel, all anti-doping practitioners, and actually anyone who is interested in learning about clean sport. It's free of charge, and the more the learning, the more we think we can nurture the culture of clean sport, which is our goal. Another key benefit I'd like to highlight is that Adele is accessible offline via the Adele mobile app. So I'll first demonstrate the desktop version of the platform and then speak about the mobile app. I'd like to share my screen so that I can jump right into demonstrating the platform.
if everyone can see my screen, you would be able to land on this platform page when you click on adele.wada-ama.org. In order for you to register, you would have to click on this green button if you are an athlete or an athlete support personnel. If you are an ADO practitioner, you would have to be mindful and click on this red button, sign in ADO zone. So suppose that I am an athlete, I will click on register and fill in the required fields. Your password would have to meet the security requirements and you would have to just retype the password. The platform language is available in three languages currently. It's available in English, French, and Spanish. You can select on the platform language. There will be another question asking you about the courses and resources language, which is different from the platform language. You can select your time zone. And here, the most important thing is selecting on your role. So depending on the role you select from here, the next page, the additional fields would differ, and also the role would customize your education programs when you log in. So please be mindful of what your role is, and if you are an athlete, you would have to select athletes. For ADO practitioners, you wouldn't find your role here, so you would have to go to the ADO zone to register. So after reading the privacy policy, the terms and conditions, please accept them because they're required and click on the next button. So this page is tailored for the athletes. You would have to select your sport, make sure that you select the correct sport because that will be the International Federation that will be monitoring you, your progress on Adele. I'll select archery. You would have to select your level in sports. So we have different categories, international level athletes, if you're competing at major games internationally, a national level athlete, talented athletes, youth athletes, and children in school sport. I'll select my level as international level athlete. Since I'm coming from Korea, I would find my country. Select it. If you have a discipline, you can put it in, but this is not a required field for gender. It's not mandatory, but you can fill it in. Your age range is required. And here is the place where you have to select your course language. We're partnering up with many national anti-doping organizations who are currently in the process of translating courses and resources in different languages. At the moment, we have only Slovenian, but I will click on English and I'll click on register. So there will be a request sent to your email. You would have to click on the confirmation link in order to come back and log into the Adele platform. For those who have already created an account in the past and haven't logged in yet, you would have received an email from Adele in January for you to activate your account. So if you can't find that email, you can simply click on reset password. Well, forgot your password or username here, where you can find your account and re-log in. So this is the way you can get to. So now I'm showing you after you log in as an international level athlete, you will have a dashboard like this where you can see your profile and your auto assigned education programs, which is linked to your role as an international level athlete. On the right hand side, one feature is I'd like to highlight is this badges and leaderboard. As we all know how innately competitive athletes are and to encourage learning. Whenever you complete any type of learning, you'd be able to gather points and badges on a dough. So the more you learn, the more you gain, and the more chances you will 
be featured on the leaderboard. You'll be seeing learners who are in the same level category as you are. So if you view the full chart, it will show you a ranking of the top 10 international level athletes. Now you can find under your education program, the assigned courses depending on your role. As an international level athlete, the guide to the list 2021 is assigned. And also I have my education program for my level. I can dive in. So you can see there are, it's composed of two courses. First is the Adele for International Level Athletes course, and the, there is the Athletes Guide to the 2021 code. I can click on it, and you would be able to see that there are various modules on the right-hand side that you would have to complete and get over 80% on your final quiz in order to get your certificate. So you have to go through all of these modules, get over 80%, and complete your learning experience survey. Just to make sure you don't have to complete all of these modules and lessons in one go, but you can complete the course at your own pace and you can resume your learning at any time to start where you left off at. So I already completed all these modules. If you click on resume where you left off, it will bring me back to where I left off at. So all of these courses are built to empower you in your anti-doping knowledge, as well as give you useful tips on how you can apply what you've learned in your lives and career. And the same principle is applied for all the other courses that we have built. For the athlete support personnel that were it was made to be relevant and practical, engaging and appealing with real life scenarios and the content of the course. And we're also aiming to make this not only a one-time learning, but a continuous learning journey for athletes and their athlete support personnel so that you can come back to refresh your knowledge on anti-doping regularly. And we also know that many international federations and NATOs are currently using Adele as their education programs. We fully support these organizations and they can have power user rights, which is similar to being an admin, to be able to easily monitor athlete learning and see whether they've completed their assigned learning or not. So without manually sending the certificates, they will be able to run reports on their end to validate whether you've completed your course, you are in progress, or has, has not started with your learning. So here under the Adil Academy, you can see other courses that are available for different target groups. And all of these courses you see here is open for you to freely enroll to. The first row, as you can see the title, it's targeted for athletes. You can see the athlete's guide in different languages. You can see the at a glance guide and the guide to the list and other courses for register testing pool athletes. There are courses for high performance coaches and parents of elite athletes, medical professionals, and for teachers. There's also a live webinar series where you can enroll to and all of those recordings will be available after you attend the webinars. There's this major events education. It's grouped up in one catalog. And as Amanda spoke about, there is the Tokyo Olympic Games and the Paralympic Games courses in English, French, and Spanish. Major event organizations like the IOC and IOC have partnered up with us as we all acknowledge the importance of prevention against doping prior to these major sporting events such as the games. So we encourage anyone who is going to the games to complete this course. You can just simply click on enroll and it will be on your education program. It 
the courses are also being translated in various languages, which will be available shortly. We aim to publish all courses in English, French, and Spanish, as we'd like to broaden our reach and to support ADOs and education their target groups via Dell. We're also working with 30 different ADOs to translate the resources and courses in various languages. So please stay tuned for more resources available in different languages. We know how frustrating it may get when you face technical difficulties on the platform. So to help you out with your queries, we have a dedicated Adele help desk to answer any questions, technical errors you've faced or experienced. So once you click on the help desk, you can see that there's different sections. And if you have questions on the final quiz, you failed and there's something that's not working, you can find articles that you can troubleshoot yourself. Or if you still haven't found the answers, you can click on the submit a request and a member of our team will get back to you. If you are interested in how your data is being protected or shared with the power users, the list of who is currently a power user can be found and what uh, data they are gathering can be found over here. For ADO practitioners, if you are interested in translating a course or resource or obtaining rights as a power user to monitor your pool, you would have to submit a request going through the Adele help desk. So this was a brief demonstration of the platform. Now, as we acknowledge, learning doesn't happen only on desktops. And as we want to make learning accessible anytime, anywhere, we launched the Adele by mobile app in January with the new Adele. So I'd like everyone who's listening to this webinar to reach out to your phones or tablets and follow me on the steps to start learning with your apps. The first step is to search for the Adele Biwata app and download it. Once you download and open the app, you will need to first type in the URL according to whether you are a regular user or an ADO employee. So for athletes, you will need to type in adele.wada-ama.org. For ADO practitioners, you would have to include a slash ADO at the end. On the next screen, there is a register button where you can create a regular user account from here if you haven't registered yet and fill out the details as you would have done on the desktop version. If you're already a registered user, type in your credentials and click on sign in to start your learning. If it's your first time on the app, you'll go through some introductory pages like this, which you can pass through. And you'll land on this page where you see your assigned education programs. You can navigate by scrolling down and see the same content as you would see on the desktop. There is this main menu where you can easily go directly to your courses and education programs you've enrolled to. Since I'm enrolled to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics course, I can click on the course, click on Start Learning Now, and I'll be able to start the course on whichever device I'm using. You can dive into the content and complete the course on your own pace. One key feature is downloading the courses for offline learning. You need to go to the course, click on the three dots and click download. It would automatically download and save the course. Another example is a resource where you can also download by following the same steps. Once the download is complete, you can check and go back to your main menu, turn on the offline mode button, which is on the bottom of the menu and you can start enjoying learning offline with the courses and resources stored on your device. Your progress will sync back once you're connected back to the internet and the content would be responsive to your device screen size. So 
that was the end of the demonstration of the platform as well as the mobile app. I hope that was very informative and got you on board with the new Adele platform. If you have any further queries or feedback, please send them through the Adele help desk after the webinar. Now I'll hand it back to Caddy to finish off. Thank you. Thank you um, both uh, Amanda and Kangoon for such uh, uh, interesting and instructive uh, sessions, really. That, that, that was amazing. Um, I've noted uh, I've noted few words, some key words that I've heard here and, and so powerful from both of you. Um, um, Amanda said, um, no excuses. Really, we have no excuses now. Uh, I think policy-wise, I think uh, strategy-wise, um, all the anti-doping uh, uh, practitioners and, and stakeholders are really fighting for education. So uh, as athletes and athletes for personnel, we also have to to take our responsibility and to, to have uh, no excuse not to get educated. And uh, that's amazing. And also um, the power of education, so amazing. Uh, the power of education lies in all of our hands. You know, it's, it's a matter of, you know, uh, sharing what you've learned today, uh, getting on Adele, um, get to, uh, your, your subscription, and, and it's so much fun. Thank you, Kangoon, for this great demonstration. The content of the course also is very fun. Everything is designed um, to ensure that athletes have fun while learning and, 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 and certainly uh, while educating themselves. So uh, really amazing. Thank you for, for, for brilliant. So um, play true day is coming. This is when you have the opportunity to show uh, why you play true. Please, as uh, you see it, uh, on, on the slide, uh, mark the date in your calendar and, and looking forward to hearing from all of you from different corners of the world uh, showing and demonstrating why you decide to play through. Uh, it will be on April 9th. And um, please also, you see next to that uh, our Speak Up platform. You can help us protect athletes and the integrity of the sport that you love and that you cherish. Um, by uh, by using the speak up platform, if you witness any 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 breach in the in in uh, in, in anti doping, or if you want to to to, to just share uh, anything that you see that that's not doing uh, going well, and and that's not fair. So so please you speak up and and please um, also participate in play today and help us uh, uh, keep uh, uh, sport clean. Um, so uh, thank you very much again. I would like to thank the education team and, and Amanda for the amazing work that's being done. They were so, so hard and uh, we can witness that as a committee uh, trying to keep up with the pace, so many, so many things that we didn't go through here, but that, that, that takes you to that place where we, we, we can have the right material and tools for you ready to support you and your anti-doping organization in, into education. So, uh, and thank you, Ben. Thank you, the Athletes Committee, for all the efforts also to support education and for having this webinar. It's a, it's a great pleasure. And I think Ben will leave now um, uh, some time for some questions, if there are any from the audience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cardi. Uh, and thank you, Cardi, Amanda, and Kanun for the, the presentations. That was incredibly informative. Um, and I think we've all uh, got something out of that. So, we have a bit of time. Now for questions and answers. Uh, so if you do have a question, please just type it into the, the question box uh, and then we can um, go about answering them. Um, I, there's been a few questions already and um, Amanda, I think you've done a pretty good job of answering most of them. Um, I'll just ask um, a couple of them again, uh, just in case people haven't seen the, the questions in the box or they can't see the answers in there. Um, and that way we'll also have some time for people to, to type all their questions and uh, all their new questions in. Um, so the first one I just wanted to cover was uh, if the expectation is that an athlete should be tested um, or should not be tested until receive anti -doping, receiving anti-doping education, um, that would imply that national federations or international federations should not let athletes compete until the athlete, athlete has received anti-doping education. Uh, can an international federation or national federation require that an athlete take anti-doping education prior to competition? Um, okay. Anyone want to answer that one? <laughs> Go on. Caddy, do you want to say something and then I can read my response maybe and, and share that with everyone? 
Well, well, thank you, Amanda. I think, I mean, that's the ideal. I think we, we all dream of that. Uh, I think that's really what we wish that every international standard will, uh, international federation will, will, will hold their, their access to that standard where they have to be educated before going into any major game. I know um, that few uh, uh, international federations are already on that pace. I know that for volleyball, for example, it's mandatory for most of their um, uh, their elite athletes or, or uh, senior athletes before competition takes um, the the Dell course or or, or takes a, 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 some kind of anti doping course and uh, that they validate that. So that's really what we're, what we hope, I think, and and I'm sure Amanda will. will will certainly uh, confirm that that's our dream. That's our dream. And also uh, my even bigger dream is for the Olympics to, uh, to ensure that the 10, 15,000 Olympians uh, who, will, who will go to the games uh, will have that stamp on their accreditation that um, that feedback is, is, is with them and, and, and anti-doping education is done. So um, Amanda, I'll leave you the floor, but that, that's, my, uh, that's my thoughts. Actually, no, nothing really to add. I, I think, um, as Caddy said, that the international standard says that athletes should be educated um, prior to being tested. And as Caddy said, this, this really now has to be a concentrated effort amongst all of us to, to achieve this. It's not fair or right that athletes are taken into a test for the first time and they have no understanding or even familiarity with what's going to, to happen. And, and that's why it's a principle that's outlined in the International Standard for Education. How that's adopted can be, as Caddy said, through International Federation's rules prior to competition, um, or through the work of NARDOs at a national level for, for domestic level competitions. But, you know, collectively, let's try and make sure that athletes have a really positive first experience with testing and that one way to do that is to make sure they're educated um, so they know what's going to happen and importantly what their their rights and responsibilities are so we encourage all of you to see what can be done thanks amanda thanks caddy uh, another question here is uh, who do you expect to take the leading role in athlete education uh, the nados the sporting governing bodies um, or event organisers, um, and do you think uh, this will differ uh, depending on the level of the athlete? Um, I can take that one. That that's a really good question, and it's it's complicated in education because we have so many different actors and organisations um, trying to do the right thing, which is to educate athletes and the support personnel. What it says in the standard, there's a roles and responsibilities section. Um, at the end of the standard, and it sets out a basic framework for operation. Um, it says that really the NARDOs uh, with the responsibility under the code for, for anti-doping education should play and should take the national lead in terms of anti-doping education at all levels. But that means that uh, the NARDOs have to work in cooperation with uh, their National Olympic and Paralympic committees before heading off to the Games. They have to work in cooperation with the national federations to ensure they have access to athletes uh, much younger and further down the pathway as we shared. And equally, um, the NARDOs need to uh, form good relationships where possible with their ministries of education or equivalent so that work can be done to uh, incorporate values-based education uh, into uh, the school or the youth sports system and that doesn't have to be in the curriculum we know that's difficult but at least advocating for and making available resources around values-based education for, for teachers and so that they can play their part in getting the values foundation right uh, in young children in sport so at a national level uh, national anti-doping organizations are the ones who are meant to be leading and coordinating the anti-doping education efforts. And as we move internationally, obviously the international federations play a key role in ensuring that international level athletes in their sport are educated. And those attending uh, a major games, as an example, then obviously prior to that competition, it would be the responsibility of the major event organizer to also coordinate uh, with international federations or NARDOs, and also to consider what anti-doping education can actually be undertaken 
at their events. Um, and that's, as I say, all outlined in the International Standard for Education. And if you want more details, um, I would really advocate everybody to uh, have a look at the guidelines for education, which are available both on WADA's website and on Adele to get more details on how this system and framework for education can uh, be applied at national and international level. Thanks, Amanda. Um, one more question here, um, and I think Kanun has already answered it in the, in the chat. Um, can people register on Adele as uh, both an athlete um, and an athlete support person under one username? So to answer that question, you only need one account in order to access all of those relevant courses. So even if you registered or put, uh, made your account as an athlete, you can enroll yourself freely to all of these education programs for doctors, for coaches and parents. So only one account is needed. If you are an ADO practitioner, you would have to sign in via the ADO zone and all the other courses for athletes and athlete support personnel it is available for you too. Great, so if I'm an athlete and I retire from being an athlete and become a coach, I can keep my, my same account. Yes, that's Thanks. correct. Um, let me just see if there's anything else. Um, there's a one final question. Uh, can can a lack of anti-doping education be used as a defense against an allegation for an anti-doping rule violation? And does anyone want to? On you, the lawyer. Ben. To you, ben. <laughs> You're the lawyer. <laughs> You're the lawyer. Um, no, no. <laughs> the answer to that is no. Um, yeah, so it is vitally important that you you do get the education. And like everyone has said in this webinar, you, you need to control the controllables um, and anti-doping is one of those controllables. Uh, and one of the big issues that we've seen from an athlete perspective in anti-doping is that inadvertent uh, doping. Uh, and you know education is a key, key part of that. Like the better that athletes and athlete support person can understand what the rules are, um, understand what is doping and what isn't doping um you know the, the more knowledge you have the more power you have to you know control your own destiny so um, i really encourage people to you know to do this education um to get others to do this education because um it is available it's free it's there um, and it, it's really 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 good as well um, and you protect yourself and your sport um are there any from Addy, Amanda, Kanoon, before we finish up here, is there anything else you wanted to add or, or say? No, really, thank you. Thanks for all of you who, who, who have joined and, and, and thank you to the WADA team. And, and again, um, I think we've, we've said it many times throughout the, the webinar that the um, majority of us is uh, compete game, but a great educator in that field told me, but uh, majority are also vulnerable. So protect yourself protect yourself for those vulnerable moments that can happen in your journey and, 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 and be responsible. Be responsible and take the power of education to protect yourself. So uh, thank you very much uh, for, for, for this webinar, Ben, and, and to both Amanda and, and Kangun for a great, great presentation and all the work you're doing behind the, behind, behind the, the scenes. Thank you and to the education team. Just a quick one, if I may, and unashamedly making a plug that I'm assuming a lot of people on this call will be either responsible for or interested in anti-doping education. And so my plug is for a webinar that's actually being held tomorrow um, on Adele. So please create an account or log into Adele and enroll yourselves onto the webinar. The webinar is really important. Uh, particularly for those responsible for planning their education programs. It covers two things. One, a workbook that was published this week in how to plan your education program. It's a workbook, PDF, that takes you through the steps you need to take when uh, developing and thinking about your target audiences, your education pools, your learning objectives, etc., ending up with a, a, a decent education plan, we hope. The second part of that webinar 
is going to talk through, uh, also uh, newly published this week and approved by the Education Committee, is the Athlete Curriculum. And the Athlete Curriculum is a model uh, that covers all of the topics uh, that's outlined in the code that must be covered in an education program and how those topics uh, can be uh, set out in terms of learning objectives for each stage of the athlete pathway. So do we talk about whereabouts and RTP uh, registered testing pools with you know, children and talented athletes? Well, probably not. But the curriculum framework gives you an outline of what things could be covered at each of the stages of the athlete pathway. And it's not mandatory. Um, I'm sure it's not perfect, but it's a really good uh, framework that you can use to help you work out and determine the topics, the level of which uh, you should go into for each stage of the athlete pathway. And really importantly, the learning objectives that we encourage you all to, to think about and perhaps cover through your education program. So that's tomorrow, Honordale, Athlete Curriculum and Planning Workbook. Please join us. Thanks, Amanda. And just a final, that's our webinar um, wrapped up for today. Uh, so just a huge thank you to our three speakers. Um, that was you know, fantastic and really informative. Um, and everyone that uh, was on this webinar that hasn't got an Adele account, I hope is now um, signing up for Adele. Um, and as Cardi said, please note that Play True Day is, is coming up on the 9th of April. Um, so we would love to, to hear from you about why you play true. And again, just to note that this is one of our webinars in this athlete series. So please keep an eye on um, the schedule for, for webinars that are coming up. And when you or when this uh, webinar closes down, there will be a survey for you to um, fill in. And if you have any questions, um, additional questions, uh, please type those in there um, and reach out. But thank you very much for joining us today. We hope that you found this education webinar useful um, and stay safe wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Later day, April 9th. <laughs>